welcome everyone to the first video in week eight. Uh, we are going to start off talking about simple versus hard, and this stems from some users asking if Rails is too complex. So, just wanted to introduce. I think that this is a simple or a simplified idea. It's a rock band, uh, or I guess a guitar hero controller. You know, we just have a, a very few inputs. And on the other hand, this is a very, by comparison, this is a very hard uh, thing to learn. This uh, has many, many inputs, many different finger configurations, and it, you know, can take years to master. Whereas we have, uh, you know, many teenagers who can play um, rock band or guitar hero, or whatever, on, on the hardest setting in uh, you know, not not too much time. So, in general, as I am thinking about simple concepts, if I take one simple solution and add it to another simple solution, then typically the result will be simple. But if we want to add many, many, many simple solutions, use all of these simple solutions, the the simplest solution we possibly can together, then. Uh, we end up with, well, this is just a Rube Goldberg machine, and you know, e each component is very simple, but as a whole, um, it's incredibly complex. So sometimes using the simplest individual component does not result in the simplest overall design. Uh, so I like to say, pick the right tool for the job. So you wouldn't want to, you know, if you're a concert violinist, you'd probably want to use a violin, not a, uh, not a rock band controller. Uh, so... As we go along, you might find that writing HTML is easy enough. You might also find that writing Ruby is relatively easy enough. And maybe even writing a simple website, not so bad. But when you when you put all of them together then to make a non-trivial website, then that is really difficult. Uh, that can be incredibly, you know, much harder than you would imagine. You, you see some of these... You're, everybody is used to Facebook and Twitter and um, you know Google Docs and all of these that these things and um, don't take a second to step back and, and realize that you know all of that interaction that they find you know very natural and very very rich and engaging uh, can well take a, a good bit of work. Uh, Google and Facebook and Twitter um, have hundreds or you know, thousands of engineers working on these things. Uh, so. I like to say that Rails is sufficiently complex for complex websites. So we, we want to use the simplest tool possible, but no simpler. If if we try to take and take a really, really, really complex idea and simplify it down uh, too much, then we aren't going to get the output we like. Um, so yeah, again, just makes it make things as simple as they can be, but no simpler. And that is why I choose Rails for, for a number of things. Um, there are several other... You, you know, you could roll your own website generation framework, or you could use uh, Sinatra. Um, one uh, one quote that I hear a bit is, w whenever somebody tries to use Sinatra uh, to build a large enough website, they end up just rewriting most of Rails. Uh, and I don't know if that's 100% true, but, uh, you know, writing these dynamic, uh, large-ish websites is... Uh, well, it's no child's play, or otherwise everyone would be doing it. So, you know, at, if you're going along and you're thinking, man, I just wish this was simpler, I just wish this was, uh, you know, easier, why can't they just, of course, I want this functionality out of the box. Uh, you, you want things as simple as they can be to accomplish the job, but if you make them too simple, then, well, they no longer accomplish that job. Um, so that's why I choose Rails. Thanks for sticking around. We're going to have an introduction into testing and talk about what, uh, what testing is good for and how we can start using it in our apps.